In this video, I'm going to teach you how to take an actor in Unreal Engine, uh, just drag any actor into the uh, into the world. Uh, and I'm going to show you kind of a very beginner friendly way of making it so that you can write some logic in blueprints uh, to make the actor move. Uh, we start by just making it so that there's an action that happens that moves it from one position to another. Uh, and then we expand it using the level blueprint uh, when we expand it to make it so that it uh, moves it across the level uh, kind of gradually uh, and eventually we make it so that once it reaches its uh, its location uh, we do some actions to it and make something something fun so uh, let's jump in so let's make the actor move so i'm gonna make the uh, the most simple version of uh, making an actor move uh, and i'm gonna hook up some logic to do it in blueprints uh, this is probably the best way when you're starting out uh, just to get a uh, a sense of how to how to do it. There are countless of ways uh, that you can do this. Some that tie more into gameplay, and some that tie more into uh, yeah, all sorts of events and things like that. But if your question is how do I just make something move uh, in the beginning, this is a good way to start. So uh, I've started a new project using the. Uh, starter content here so you can see this uh, ships with Unreal Engine you can use uh, whatever content you want for this example uh, but I'm gonna start off by just creating a new level so you can see that I'm in the untitled level here uh, and I'm just gonna go and save the current level and I'm gonna call it uh, move demo level here we go so nothing really happens uh, other than you can see here on the top left we're now in a level called move the move demo level all right, so I'm going to go here on the top, uh, at the bottom left, and I'm going to pick a prop. So uh, we have a prop here. Uh, this is a small prop library, and I'm just going to drag and drop in the uh, this chair here. Uh, so now I have something, I have an object in my world. Uh, one thing to notice is that when I drag my object here into the world, it's gonna it's gonna get a location so here on the left you can see uh, its location is 300 minus 300 on the x-axis so if I move it around uh, it's gonna be it's gonna move around so uh, now I'm uh, effectively moving an actor just using the controls in the editor uh, but that's not what we wanted to do so I'm gonna reset these I'm gonna I want to put this on zero uh, this is gonna make the example easier uh, and I'm also going to take, you can see here in the in the outline here, we have something called the player start. And the player start is an object that when we press play, uh, our camera or our pawn or player controller in the world is going to be placed, it's going to start here. So if I press play now, uh, I'm actually inside of the chair. So I'm just going to move my player start. Uh, let's see, I'm going to move it back a little bit so you can see that I'm moving it here on uh, to a minus 220 on the X axis. So now that I press play, you can see that the chair is ahead of me, but the location of the chair is at, uh, and now the location of the chair is at zero, zero, zero. And so, which means that now that we play, we have the chair right in front of us. All right. So uh, now we've finished our setup. <clears throat> So now we want to do the uh, we want to move the actual actual actor, or move the actual object in the world, uh, and we're going to do that with a level blueprint. Uh, you've probably seen examples where objects like this chair, the chair itself can have a bunch of logic, uh, and and we can take a look at at some point how you make the chair move by itself. But uh, let's just start with making simple logic that just moves the chair. Uh, we'll go to this drop down here. Uh, and we will do open level blueprint. So the level blueprint here, uh, this is a bit of a special blueprint because this is kind of global logic. Uh, this is where you can do controls on the level itself. And uh, this is sometimes used to play sounds, visual effects, and you can use this for all sorts of things. Uh, but the cool thing about this is, and especially when you're starting out and you're trying to figure out learning how to do uh, blueprint code and logic and, and things like that, is uh, you can go into your world. So we pick our chair here. You can see that it's selected here in the, in the outliner. I can drag and drop my chair into the level blueprint and I can get a reference to it. So now you can see that here we have the begin play node, which is the logic that happens when the game starts. And we have the tick node here, 
already uh, created for us which happens every time that the game ticks so that that happens 60 times a second or 30 times a second or something like that uh, and now we also have a reference here to our chair and if we drag out of this uh, uh, out of the blue uh, kind of line here we can actually cr do operations on the chair so uh so let's just do a simple one uh, before we go into actually moving it. Well, let's move it. So we'll drag out here. So by dragging out from this uh, this point here, you're going to get all of the commands that are uh, kind of relevant or available if you have the context sensitive uh, kind of flag checked. So these are the commands that are uh, available to this this actor here this chair here so there are a whole bunch of commands so I normally just keep a list of the ones and this is something that you just need to uh, need to learn and uh, it's good to write down uh, so we want to set the actors location we want to do set location so I just write in set location here at the top and you can see set actor location now I get a note that has this uh, white pin uh, which is an execution pin if we drag the event begin play uh, white execution pin into the set actor location pin here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna run this operation on the actor that we have here in the level. So uh, this gives us a couple of options, uh, and the most important one for us right now is the new location. So let's say our we wanted our logic to take this chair from its original location which is zero 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 and we want to move it all the way to the front here let's just say somewhere around 500. Uh, if we wanted to make this logic happen uh, we can just type in 500 here which means that now when we press play uh, nothing happens right so uh, and we get an error here probably underneath me yeah here we go uh, so this is one thing that we need to uh, need to take uh, take into account. So uh, the reason this didn't work is that when we select the actor here, uh, there are some settings here on the on the right, and by default, static mesh actors, the the ones that we dragged into the world, are set to static. So they are set so that they don't move, and this is done for optimization purposes. So if this happens, if you run into this, just change it to movable, and now that we play, uh, everything works. Uh, so you can you can even see that the uh, uh, we have our camera. It starts here, and when we press play, the uh, the object gets moved like this. So this is the uh, like this is the most absolute simple way of moving an actor. But this is probably not going to be super useful for you uh, because you probably want to make a game and you want to have things moving. So let's modify this logic a little bit and make it move uh, gradually from the original position from zero zero zero. So we have the player start here, uh, this one here, and let's make it move uh, towards a goal. So uh, we started by using the event begin play node. Uh, and this node just runs once when the game starts and just executes this command. So what we want to do is we want to do this on tick. So every time, every time that the game kind of updates itself, so 30 times a second or 60 times a second, we want to move a little bit closer to our goal. Uh, so if we hook it up like this, uh, what's going to happen is that every time that the game ticks, we just set the actor location to this fixed fixed location here. So we need something that goes from zero or our original point and moves all the way up to the uh, uh, moves all the way up to 500. So I'll admit there are ways to do this in a in a better way, and uh, if you want to know, uh, want to see an example of how to do that, just let me know in the comments. But the the easiest way to uh, kind of to understand is we create a variable here, uh, and a variable is just um, an entity in the world where you store information, like it's an entity here in the blueprint. So uh, the default one that we get is a boolean, and the boolean uh, could just contains a, uh, a true or false. So if I compile, you can see it's a true or false. So this means that the level blueprint can remember true or false. Good thing for us, uh, it can also remember numbers. So a floating point number is uh, the number that we want to want to remember. It gets a name called new var. Uh, you can either press F2 to change the name here, or you can go here to the top uh, right. And let's call it uh, how uh, distance 
moved. So I can I can name this whatever I want. So uh, so now what I've done is I've created a level blueprint that remembers a number, and the number is called distance moved. I'm going to drag the distance moved variable into the uh, the level blueprint, and I'm going to do get. So I want to get the value of distance moved. And when we start out, distance moved is zero. So it's initialized with uh, the value zero. I want to take distance moved and I'm going to drag out of it just like we did before. And I'm going to do a plus. Plus gives me the add operator and I'm going to add one value to it. This means that uh, uh, whenever we do something, so we haven't finished this yet, but whenever this logic gets executed, we take this number, starts off at zero, this is zero, and we do plus one, and the result of it comes out here. So, uh, and now because we want to we wanna store the result. So I drag the distance moved variable in again, and instead of doing a get, because I'm not fetching the information again, I do a set which means I want to update it. So I take the current value of it, I increment it by one, I add one, and I want to save, I want to set the value, so zero plus one is going to be the new value of distance moved. And every time that we tick, uh, this is what we want to do. So uh, now we have an incrementing number. Uh, okay, so uh, what good does that do us? Uh, we have the set actor location node here and basically what we want to do is we want to get this number here to go from zero and up to 500 for example but you can see that the uh, this is a green variable which means this is a float and this is a, a transfer uh, or a vector which is a, it's essentially a, a set of three values so you can't really plug things in so you can but this is gonna. This is not what we're gonna. What we want to do. So this actually turns the uh, the float. It takes the number and creates a vector from the number. But we want to only update one one of the values. So you can do that by right clicking on the new location uh, vector, and you can do split struct, and this gives you access to the individual values of the location. So now what we can do is we can take the distance move value here and we can uh, we can get it so we're going to get the value of it and we can plug it into location x so if we review the logic so every tick once every second we get the distance moved value we increment it by one and we save the result of that inside of the inside of this container inside of our variable and then we say take the chair actor and set its new location to the zero on y and zero on z because we're not doing anything with those and set it to this outcome of this calculation here which is going to be one and then it's going to be two and then it's going to be three okay so let's play and see what happens so now you can see that now when i play uh the chair is moving slowly away from us because our uh, our logic is working so uh but what's going to happen now is the problem that's going to happen now is is it's never going to stop uh it's just going to continue doing this uh, indefinitely so to uh to wrap this example up uh, i'm going to stop the actor and the way that we do that is yet again, we get a reference here to the uh, the distance moved variable. I'm dragging it from here and doing get. I can also just copy paste it from here. Uh, again, I'm dragging out of the green value here, uh, kind of so that I can get some, uh, get the, fu the functions or the, the logic that's available uh, from this one uh, on this object, on this variable. I'm going to do greater than greater or equal so this is the same this is like a math operation and this is going to check is the distance moved value here is it greater or equal to some set number and i'm going to say 500 and then i'm going to add a new node called a branch uh, if you're kind of familiar with programming a branch is like an if statement if a condition if true or false either do the true thing or do the false thing so we plug this in here and the distance moved uh, kind of check here the greater than check is going to return 
a rat value here, and the rat value is a true or false. So if we plug that in here, uh, every time that our logic runs, uh, it's going to move the actor, and then it's going to ask, all right, so I've moved the actor, I uh, moved our chair. Ha is distance moved? Is it uh, greater than or equal than this number here, than 500? If it's not, we don't do anything. But if it is, uh, we want to do something. Uh, and that something is, let's, uh, just like we uh, we did with the set actor location, you can do things like set rotation, set actor rotation. And I'm just going to put some, some random numbers in here. And I'm going to copy paste this and I'm going to do set actor scale 3D. And I'm going to set it to three. Uh, so this is just an example. It's still going to continue. Uh, it's still going to continue moving, but uh, now once it reaches the uh, kind of the end, uh, we can see that something happens. So now we reacted to it uh, actually, uh, yeah, reaching its location. And in this example, we're scaling it and rotating it just uh, as an example. But uh, but here you can add more of your your actual game logic. Uh, so this was how to uh, what's the sim most simple way to move an actor. Uh, if you like this, definitely uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, leave a comment. And if you have any questions, uh, definitely reach out. There are, like I mentioned earlier, probably a hundred ways to move an actor. They're all useful for kind of different scenarios. If you wanna wanna see an example on uh, some of the other ones, uh, just let me know, and I'd be happy to uh, to make a video. But uh, but that's it for now. Thank you.